Welcome to VTU e Sectiona program. Today I'll be dealing with uh, module five uh, from water supply and sanitation. Uh, in the last session, uh, we had covered about uh, um, fire, and this is the next part of it: life safety. So, in fire and life safety, uh, we have discussed about uh, active uh, methods of uh, fire prevention. And so now we'll look into the pre uh, prevention of uh, fire by passive methods. So before that, if uh, before going into that, uh, we'll just discuss about what is life safety. We had seen about the issues, how the issues happens when the fire occurs in a building or a setup. So what, how can it be avoided by active uh, safety measures? So uh, to go into this uh, life safety, life safety is something which is very important for uh, everybody to protect people based on building, construction, protection and occupancy features that minimize the effects of fire and related hazards. So when, we, when it comes to building and uh, building design and construction and occupancy features, it is very important protecting the lives of people. So life safety becomes very important in providing uh, uh, for different kinds of people. So every building which is constructed should be equipped, maintained and operated so as to avoid undue danger to the life and safety of the occupants from fire, smoke, fumes or even panic. Panic also could be the major reason why uh, people get uh, uh, affected by the fire. So, uh, fi uh, fi incidents of fire. So, fire, smoke, fumes or panic during this time, uh, this time period necessary for escape. So there, are few, uh, there are few different uh, terminologies which we have to look into when we are uh, designing our building with respect to life safety. So in the life safety uh, we might provide, we had discussed in the earlier sessions about sprinkler systems, about uh, fire buckets, about uh, uh, fire alarm systems. So likewise while designing those are the additives which are added in the building to protect the building and the occupants. But when we are also designing there are few things which we have to consider. So, first we look into the fire door. Uh, these are the few terminologies which we use while we are designing a building with respect to the fire incidents. Okay. So, fire door, a fire resistive door approved for openings in fire separation. Fire exit, so there is something called as fire exit. So, you provide a fire exit for all kinds of buildings whether it is small, big, uh, based on the classifications which we saw earlier, earlier sessions. So fire exit can be provided. A way out, what is fire exit? It is a way out leading to an escape route having panic bar hardware provided on the door. Panic bar hardware is nothing but this handle always provided either side of the uh, door so that you can open easily from any side. And fire lift, if, it, if nowadays we see lot of vertical buildings, mixed use buildings, high rise buildings. So fire lift is very very essential in high rise buildings. In low rise we still have uh, fire staircases but in high rise fire lift is the major measure to reduce the fire incidents. So fire lift is nothing but it is installed to enable fire services personnel to reach different flows with minimum delay having such features as required in accordance with this part. So there is, this fire lift is particularly for a fire services personnel to reach out any part of the building, any floor of the building to uh, without any delay. So to avoid the circumstances. Fire resistance is a property of an element of building construction and is the measure of its ability to satisfy for a stated period some or 
all of the following criteria. So, fire resistance is this is the common terminology which we use in most of the building materials while we are constructing with respect to fire resistance. So, fire resistance is nothing but it is just the property of a building material, okay, uh, building material which is uh, used to measure its ability to satisfy following properties like resistance to collapse. How much time does it take to collapse? Resistance to penetration of flame and hot gases. It has to be able, the material which we use for these particular uh, spaces has to be able to resist the penetration of flame and hot gases. It also has to resist temperature rise on the unexposed face up to a mix, maximum of 180 degree centigrade and or of average of uh, 150 degree centigrade. So, this materials has to uh, certainly do all of these activities. So, there is uh, that is fire resisting property of a material. Now, how do we measure say brick has a fire resisting property. Now, how do we measure uh, fire resisting? So, that is fire resistance rating. The time that a material or a construction, the time which the material or a construction will withstand the standard fire exposure as determined by fire test done in accordance with the standard methods of fire test of materials and structures. Fire tower, there is something called as fire tower also. So, you can actually have a separate tower or integrated in a building itself, design itself. So, fire tower is nothing but an enclosed staircase which can only be approached from the various floors through the landings or lobbies separated from both the floor areas and the staircase by fire resisting doors and open to the outer air. Fire resisting wall. Now, uh, this is about the material that is wall, this is about the building element. So, fire resisting is a building material. Fire resisting wall is a quant, uh, num, uh, the time period which that wall can resist or the, you can even refer to the wall which is resisting the fire or smoke. A fire resistance rated wall. So, it is always measured with the fire resistance rating. So, the fire resistance rated wall having protected openings, it should have protected openings which restricts the spread of fire and extends continuously from the foundation to at least 1 meter above the roof. Means of egress. Many times when it comes to fire, fire resistance, we also use these terminologies like means of egress, travel distance, very important. So, uh, we need to understand what is that. Means of egress is nothing but a continuous and unobstructed way of travel from any point in a building or structure to a place of comparative safety. So, means of egress is nothing but a route from where we can escape from any point of the building to the fire staircase or to the fire exit, towards that fire exit point. So, that is which is unobstructed, there should be any, should not be any obstructions. Maybe in the hospitals and all we would have seen that there is a fire plan on the fire exit plan layout put up on each corridors. So, so that is a norm for everybody to put up uh, those fire exit uh, plans so that people are aware where to go when there is in case of fire. Okay. So, travel distance, this is nothing but the distance which has to be traveled from any point of a building, from any point of a building to a protected escape route, external escape route or final exit. Okay. So, the, this, those are a few major um, 
terminologies. Uh, now uh, we will see fire prevention. How can we do pre fire prevention in a building? So fire prevention in a building can happen in many ways, but it is based on, it can be based on building occupancy, it can be based on type of construction. So these two are broadly classified to prevent fire in a building. It can be either based on occupancy or on type of construction. Those, these two uh, types of uh, fire prevention is uh, produced by uh, BIS that is uh, standards from Indian standards. So the classification of building based on occupancy, now let us look, it into the, look into the first option that is buildings based on occupancy, how it can be prevented, fire can be prevented. All buildings classified according to the use or the character of the occupancy as per following. So as per following there are different categories group A, group B, group C, group D, group E, F, G, H, J. This has been already discussed again earlier. Now again I would like to reiterate uh, based on the classification. This is a classification of a building based on occupancy. Residential, group A is residential, group B is educational, group C institutional, group D assembly, business, mercantile, group G industrial, group H storage, group J hazardous. So all of these categories are basically uh, the occupancy of the building spaces or the number of occupancy is different. In residential there might be less occupancy, educational there is more occupancy, institutional there is more occupancy. So likewise uh, based on the occupancy the categories are done. We also saw about in earlier classes about the fire zones in the city with respect to city. This is with respect to the building but with respect to city also there is fire zone 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 categories are there. Okay. So classification of buildings based on types of construction. So you can even design your uh, building based on the typology of the building or uh, occupancy and this is types of construction. What type of construction you adapt in the building. So based on that it can be classified. The design of any building and the type of materials used in its construction are important factors in making a building are resistant to a complete burnout and in preventing the rapid spread of fire, smoke or fumes which may otherwise contribute to loss of lives and property. So that is the basic intention of that. So fire resistance of a building or its structural and non-structural elements is expressed in HARS against a specified fire load which is expressed in kilo calories per meter square per square meter that is 1 by 1 meter square me what is the kilo calorie you can expect so that is how it is measured expressed so it is nothing but you, again this fire based on the type of construction the constructional construction elements can be divided into structural and non-structural elements which is these uh, these elements can be expressed in hours fire rating resistance is expressed in hours so for these building materials which is used in structural or non-structural building elements the uh, fire resistance rating is expressed in hours against a specified fire load. Fire load is kilo calorie per meter square. Right? So this uh, horse is what is for example uh, fire resisting wall should can be one hour fire resistant or two hour fire resistant 
Likewise, different materials based on different materials of usage on that particular building element, fire resistant can be done. So, that is what comes under types of construction. For the purpose of the code, the type of construction according to fire resistance shall be classified into four categories type 1 construction, type 2, type 3, type 4 constructions. So, these fire resistance ratings for various type of construction for structural and non-structural members shall be as given as in the table. So, here uh, the document will be shared to you. So, now how the, uh, uh, how can we get this idea of which material is two, 2 hours or which material is 1 hour resistance? one and a half hour resistance, where do we need this material, where do don't we need. So, there is a ready made table provided by uh, building Indian stand, uh, BIS or Indian standards NBC what we call as NBC. So, in that document there is a provision of these things where they give in detail say for example all of these are structural elements, these are type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4 constructions ok. So, for exterior walls fire separation less than 3 points if this fire it is not about the whole building is it is not about the whole building which you make as fire resistant. It is only few spaces like fire corridors, fire staircases, fire lifts, fire exits fire doors where you provide direct exit to the fire corridors and fire lifts. So, dedicated spaces is what you follow these rules. So, fire separation less than 3.7 meter, fire separation of 3.7 meter or more but less than 9 meter. Likewise, there are different categories which you can find out under which category you are going to build it. So, for example, here exit there is a something called as fire resisting walls fire resisting walls so now when we say fire existing walls this is a structural element so fire resisting walls in type 1 if you are following type 1 construction it should have 4 hour rating if you are following type 2 2 hour ratings if you are following type 3 3 uh, 2 hour ratings if you are following type 4 to our ratings again. So, likewise you can find out for type 2 construction what all can be done, for type 3 what can be done, for type 4 what can be done. So, basically type 1, type 2, type 4 constructions are nothing but the hours of rating which these uh, uh, structural elements and non-structural elements, materials and construction is provided, classified actually. So, same way, so this is about, uh, this is just one slide which has been taken from the uh, NBC codes for the, for showing how different rating, fire resistant ratings of structural and uh, non-structural elements are, can be provided. Now, say for the fire resisting walls, it has different materials involved in it, the brick masonry and brick or stone or whatever masonry or concrete blocks whatever masonry you provide into that and then the plastering on surface and then the painting. So, all of this has in detail specification of what kind of painting has to be used, what kind of uh, plastering has to be done, what could be the thickness of the wall, what is the thickness of plastering provided on the wall. So, in detail in the NBC code it is been measured. So, it can be referred, you can refer in the code. So, same way reinforced concrete columns, this is one slide which has been taken from the book just to say now if we are using reinforced concrete columns, if it is fully exposed or 50 percent exposed or one face exposed to the fire, how much should be the width and cover? So, likewise minimum dimensions excluding any finish for a fire resistance of 
one and half hour rating this much be the width of the wall fully exposed wall should have if you want one and half hour fire resistance that means if the fire incident happens by chance and if you have a fully exposed RCC that is reinforced concrete column then and if you want to plan that column to be one and half hour fire resistance so one the width of the column the size of the column should be 150 so likewise for one hour 200 for one and half hour 215 sorry this the first one is for half an hour one hour 200 one and half hour uh, 250 two hours 300 as the number of hours resistance is increased the size of the rcc column also keeps increasing so likewise 4 hours 450 this is like a common common rule for most kind of a diff, many kinds of material so likewise if we are following framed construction load bearing required to resist fire from one side at, at a time it might not be complete both side it has to resist maybe internal surface of a wall could resist so likewise if it has to be planned uh, what can be done here uh, so framed construction what we do mostly we use columns with uh, structural steel members or rcc members and uh, in between we cover it with cover it cover it with different materials so likewise plasterboard layers can be used sanded uh, gypsum plaster can be used lightweight aggregate gypsum plaster can be used so for different materials what could be the resistance or uh, for one hour rating the minimum thickness of that particular material is what is being showed here so likewise different material is being shown okay so uh, this table is also again taken from uh, NBC code book so occupant load this occupant load uh, which is the first type of fire resistance so it has uh, different uh, categories in that group of occupancy and occupant load occupant measured with respect to meter square per person for one person how much is the area how much area can be provided this is for the complete building occupancy is measured for the complete building so for residential uh, occupant load can be considered as 12.5 meter square per person with respect to the fire this is only with respect to the fire what has been mentioned here in educational 4 meter square person per person in institutional 15 meter square per person so likewise different categories like a b c d e f g h i j till that all of the categories has got different different occupant load with respect to uh, type uh, occupancy of type of the building so here if we see storage has 30 storage has 30 occupant per person per square meter 30 people can uh, can be provided for 1 by 1 square meters in storage but whereas educational should be provided only for 4 for 1 square meter 1 by 1 square meter area four person can be taken into consideration while designing for fire resistance so likewise while designing these occupant can be considered likewise in the second option travel distance for occupancy and type of construction so here now if we are considering these are the type of occupancy say for example educational so occupant load is per square meter four likewise travel distance maximum travel distance for construction okay will be uh, in type 1 and type 2 construction it will be 30 type 3 and type 4 construction it will be 22.5 meter so educational uh, in all of these has uh, similar uh, um, uh, distances travel distances 
So what is this travel distances? From any, as I explained about the meaning of the travel distance in the earliest, earlier slide, it is the distance from any point of the building, any point of the building to the escape route, uh, through the escape route till the fire exit or direct exit, right. So that is, that should not be 30 meters, say you have a square building or a rectangular building or any shape building which is quite huge. So uh, the fire exits, how many you can provide will be based on this distances. So it has to be calculated from any particular point of any, any point among in the building to the fire exit. There are few clauses which has been mentioned for minimal travel distance like for fully sprinkled building. For if the building is completely provided with the facility of sprinkler, the travel distance may be increased by 50% of the values specified. Uh, uh, Rams shall be protected with automatic sprinkler system and shall be counted as one of the means of escape. So likewise there are few clauses where it substitutes the uh, with the different facilities and you can increase the distance as well. So we will look into a few uh, 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 active uh, active uh, uh, methods of uh, conserving the spaces. So this is something called as uh, we, we also use fire escape staircase in buildings. So interior shell, interior stays if the fire escape staircase is provided inside the building, it should be constructed of non combustible materials throughout the whole wall or anything what you built in that fire staircase which is internal of a building, it has to be constructed with non-combustible materials. If it is internal staircase again, it should be constructed as a self-contained unit with an external wall consisting at least one of its sides and should be completely enclosed. It should be completely enclosed and one of its sides should be exposed to outside. Hollow combustible construction should not be permitted. You can, it cannot be, uh, we cannot uh, construct a wall of a fire escape staircase with hollow materials. Fire escape staircase, a staircase should not be arranged round a lift. This is a common norm which we use uh, while we are designing also. A staircase should never be provided around a lift. If this is a lift, staircase Staircase should not be provided around the lift. Around the lift, if this is the lift, a staircase should not be provided around the lift as per the fire rules because either ways you cannot be, you cannot use lift or staircase because this is a vertical shaft, it can open break up into the staircase very easily. So a staircase should not be arranged round a lift shaft unless the later is totally enclosed by a material of fire resistance rating as that for the type of construction itself. So until unless this whole or this complete, until unless this complete lift or a lift shaft is enclosed with the material which is fire resistant, which has a fire resistant rating for that particular type of construction, it cannot be provided. No gas piping or electrical panels should be laid in the stairway. 
in the stairway even if you have a normal stairway you cannot have gas piping or uh, electrical panels in fire escape staircase. Fire escape staircase minimum width of the staircase should be for residential 1 meter width of the one flight of a staircase should be 1 meter. So including both side, both the uh, flights if in case of dog leg staircase it can be 2 meter the width of the staircase room. So likewise for residential hotel buildings 1.5 assembly buildings like auditoriums, theatres, cinemas etc 2 meters for institutional buildings like hospital 2 meters in fire escape uh, fire escape staircases for institutional like hospital should be 2 meters so both the side 2 2 it will be the width of the room will be 4 meters likewise uh, different categories for different kind of buildings based on the usage the fire escape staircase tread tread is the if this is the section this is tread this surface which you keep your leg is tread so that tread the minimum width so the minimum width of the tread should be minimum should be 25 centimeter right so this should be 0.25 meters point uh, uh, sorry 25 centimeters for internal staircase of residential buildings that is only for residential buildings and 30 centimeter for any other type of buildings so for other than residential any commercial public educational buildings it has to be 30 centimeter minimum the tread should be constructed and maintained in a manner to prevent slipping the material should be such that slip uh, slipping should be avoided riser riser is nothing but the step which you raise and put your foot from one step to the other so this riser distance can be 19 centimeter you can even provide 19 centimeter for residential buildings but Whereas 15 centimeters, 0.15 by 15 centimeters is what you use for other type of building. And one flight of a stair, one flight, one flight which you have like this, this hole should comprise of 15 steps, 15 risers per flight. So the number of people in between floor landings, so this is the landings, now you climb and go above and then again you have one more landing. So the number of people in between floor landings in staircase should not be less than the population of each floor for the purpose of design of staircase. And the handrails, handrails should be provided at a minimum height of 100 centimeters and not exceeding 120 centimeter to be measured from the base of the middle of the treads to the top of the handrails. I think this I can explain in this sketch. So from here to this if this is the staircase from the tread, tread is this, tread are these. So from the tread minimum 1 meter should be the handrail which is provided right so handrails is nothing but the top top element of a staircase which you hold okay so handrails should be provided at a minimum height of 100 centimeter this here it is mentioned in m meter mm 1000 mm from the tread not from the floor but from the tread 1000 meter 1000 uh, mm and not exceeding 120 centimeter to be measured from the base of the middle of the tread to the top of the handrails. 
so from top of the hand rails should not be till the bo uh, bottom of this uh, uh, top of this tread should not be more than 120 centimeter or 1200 mm minimum 1000 mm maximum 1200 mm that's it further the gap the gap between two vertical should not exceed 30 centimeter so the this gap should not exceed 30 centimeter two verticals this gap should be reduced to 15 centimeter where children are likely to use the staircase if it is only for elders it can be 30 centimeter if there are children children there in the uh, building if the, there are children using this uh, spaces 150 is maximum what we can provide for the center to center of these vertical stays the design of the staircase also is very simple it has to be like very simple these are the dimensions which we can follow in, during the design of the staircase okay so there is a uh, something called as pressurization of uh, staircases so when we have this staircase room fire exit staircase room or a fire staircase fire staircase space the whole fire staircase tower or a fire staircase room is pressurized from internal and external spaces because what is pressurization it is a method adopted for protected escape routes against ingress of smoke especially in high rise buildings in pressurization air is injected into the staircases lobbies or corridors to raise their pressure slightly above the pressure in adjacent part of the buildings now say we have a staircase fire exit staircase where you have a exit outside directly and there is a building surrounding so pressure from here to here is have a difference so pressurization is a method adopted for protected escape routes sometimes what happens there can be a provision of corridors so there is for this complete escape route pressurization can be done so that uh, there is no ingress of smoke especially in high rise buildings mostly this method is followed in high rise buildings so the doors which is provided near the staircase fire staircase is held very tightly even if when you when we experience to open the door it's very hard so the pressurization is maintained in that way so in pressurization air is injected into the staircase what do they do they inject the air inside the staircase lobby corridors so when we use lobby and corridors doors should be provided near the corridors also or lobby anywhere and also near the staircase so air is injected into the staircase lobbies or corridors to raise their pressure they will increase the pressure with respect to the surrounding spaces slightly above the pressure in the adjacent parts of the building as a result ingress of smoke or toxic gases into the escape routes will be prevented so there is no there is no provision of smoke entering inside the there is no provision of smoke entering inside this escape route so it can be easily maintained or used as a fire escape route the pressurization of staircases shall be adapted for high rise buildings mostly high rise buildings because the uh, staircase is the only means uh, for uh, high rise buildings to escape and buildings having mixed occupancies like multiplexes mixed occupancy like could be mixed use or multiplexes having covered area more than 500 square meters if the total multiplex area is more than 500 square meters or any other uh, any other spaces which is more than 500 square meters like it could be one for one usage 
So, for that kind of buildings this uh, pressurization has to be provided. So, how do you measure the pressurization is nothing but for less than 15 meter 8 pascals and uh, 50 pascals for emergency operation 15 meter or above 15 pascals and uh, 50 likewise the air can be measured in the this. So, pressurization of staircases pressurization system may be of two types single stage and two stage designed for operation only in the event of an emergency. Two stage where normally a level of pressurization is maintained in the protected escape routes and in increased level of pressurization can be brought into operation in an emergency. Now the fire same fire staircase or a fire exit staircase can be provided externally also outside the building also as it is maybe uh, uh, it could be seen from outside directly. So, like that if the if there are uh, provision of those kind of staircases what has to be followed. So, external staircase shall have a straight flight mostly it is always preferred to have a straight flight one flight not less than 1250 mm wide. So, it has to be 1.25 meter wide and with 250 mm treads. In this was uh, quite same as a minimum dimension for internal and external 250 mm threads and razors not more than 190 mm. The maximum we can give is 190 mm or 19 centimeter for the rise. The number of risers shall be limited 15 per flight. So, likewise the staircase can have a slope then landing continuous then landing continuous and landing. So, straight flight can be provided with respect to number of landings. So, one straight flight these one straight flight can have 15 rises per flight. No external staircase used as a fire escape shall be inclined at an angle greater than 45 degree to the horizontal. The, the angle which is followed here should not be more than 45 degree. It should always be less than 45 degree. For the external staircase in case if uh, spiral staircase is used as a fire exit staircase, the use of spiral staircase can be, shall be limited to low occupant load where very uh, less people are using the space could be residential or something like that and to a building height of 9 meter only if the building height is 9 meter you can opt for a spiral staircase as external fire exit staircase. A spiral staircase should not be less than 150 centimeter in dia and uh, shall be designed to give the adequate headroom. It need to pro be provided with the adequate headroom. The use of spiral staircase shall be limited to low occupant load and uh, uh, height building height as 9 meter. So, that is about uh, fire exit staircases internal staircase and fire exit external staircase and pressurization of the staircase. Now, let us talk about travel distance. So, as uh, this is one example which has been shown showed here. So, there are a few student hostels and staff room provided here. Now, uh, there are lifts, two lifts and staircase and smoke stop lobby and staircase 1, staircase 2 is provided. So, there are toilets and student hostels on either side, right. So, uh, there is a provision of uh, sprinkler provided in these spaces ok. So, travel distance is nothing but in this particular exam from the farthest point of a building if, if we just consider this much is the building space from the farthest point of a building from the farthest point of a building the distance which we travel this is a 
fire staircase. So, from the distance which a person can travel should be 30 meter or should not be less than 30 meter. If it is sprinkler is provided for the whole space then 60 meter. So, from this point to this point to this point till the door can be 30 meters. The length of the whole corridor from here to here to here can be 30 meter if there are no sprinkler system minimum is 30 meter for uh, this typology. And if there is a provision of sprinkler then it go up to 60 meters. So, that is the travel distance. Now here this is a fire escape route or a plan. Similar kind of uh, plans can be found in mostly all kind of public buildings or uh, other than residential. Sometimes even in apartments how the fire escape plan can be provided. So, the travel distance is nothing but the green thing which has been highlighted. That is sorry that is the fire, uh, uh, fire escape route. So, the travel distance is uh, in through the route of the fire escape route. So, from any particular point it has to be exited. So, we have one exit, second exit, third exit, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight and nine. So, in this fire escape route there are around 8 to 9 escapes directly from inside to buildings. So, from any means the distance should be like 30 meters which is been provided to escape right. So, somewhere closer by if the person is standing here it can be moved through this route. If a person is closer here it can, he can move out like this or he can move out like this. So, likewise the escapes, the, the exits has to be, number of exits are provided based on the occupant load and the travel distance. If you have sprinkler for the whole building then it can be multiplied, 60 meters can, could be the double, you can make the distance as double, twice it can be increased. Uh, so, this is the standard uh, uh, layout for uh, staircase room when it is internal. So, if you see this, this is the staircase which is being provided. Now, it has a wall which has hatching like this. That means this uh, wall is made for fire rated resistance. Maybe one and a half hours, two hours, whatever time it is the whole staircase room is enclosed with the wall which is fire rated which has a fire rated resistance. Now this door also the door which has been shown here also has a fire rated resistance. So it could be one and a half hour, one and a half hour or two hours, two hours like that. Likewise all this is been calculated and the width of the walls are done based on the uh, number of hours resistance is to be provided. The other provision which uh, sometimes we need to do is like earlier we saw smoke stop lobby. There could be provision of smoke stop lobby like this. So, this one, this whole thing is a smoke stop lobby. Now, this is a fire exit, right? So, for the fire exit staircase, there is a smoke stop lobby. So, you provide a door and you provide the smoke, uh, so you look into that, that smoke from this area does not enter to this fire exit staircase area. So, there is a smoke stop lobby designed for that. So, likewise, uh, it, uh, there are few things which we can have. This is a refuge area. This is a refuge area in case of any, uh, in case any wheelchairs has to be provided for universally accessible spaces, they also can be uh, done with the uh, spaces provided like this. Uh, two wheelchairs could be parked 
or one or two or three based on the requirement wheelchairs could be parked and for them they can also access this fire exit uh, lobbies is easily so this one uh, this is one more uh, way of doing it so smoke stop lobbies is what uh, uh, i wanted to discuss in this particular stake this particular slide so we have two exits two fire exit staircases and in front of that there is a smoke stop lobby completely enclosed with a door and these smoke stop lobbies doesn't have any gaps the construction of that is such that there is no gaps provided for smoke stop lobbies similarly different uh, option there is tenant a tenant b smoke stop lobby for here and here but if we see there is different entrance for these people and these people to the same smoke stop lobby so the access has to be easy for these kind of spaces so we can continue uh, uh, further details in the next session thank you